see oddities. First, my man exposed the wine industry. I was in the store yesterday. They tried to sell me $45 wine. I said, hold up, big dog. Why is it 45? You know, you know, the quality of wine stops at $20. The internet historian told me so. All right? They got mad and kicked me out. I don't know. Let's see what this one's about. By NordVPN. <laughs> It's you. <laughs> You've completed again. the crash course on theater and wine. Yeah, we did. Feeling smart. The theater episode, that's probably one of the best videos on the internet. I ain't gonna lie. Hug, are we? <laughs> Deserving of love, perhaps? Worthy oh, of eye helpful. contact. That's cute. But there's still a lot more work to be done. Look here. These shoes are made from real Italian leather. This bag is made from the leather of real Italians. Okay. Not impressed? Oh, How we're about to get into the fashion industry? Oh, this boy better cook. He better cook. About this fur coat. It's made from the wolf of Wall Street. An Xbox with the original PT demo still installed. Yo, that's crazy. He brought a... First of all, it wasn't on Xbox, it was on PlayStation. But that's neither here nor there. We need to get PT ported to Steam today. <laughs> A signed first edition copy of, of Moby Dick uh, with its little story. known sequel, Moby Balls. <laughs> and last but not least, The Squid from Squid Game. Don't you get it? Oddities. Weird stuff. I mean, the, the first section's on perfume. Listen, I'm going to level with you. I kind of got distracted <laughs> and uh, we went off topic. I don't even know what this is about anymore. Here's my Netflix stand-up special. It should explain everything. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be a hard act to follow. That Kramer guy has some very good one-liners. But I've got some jokes lined up. <clears throat> Question. Why is perfume so expensive? Cause you have to pay perfume. All right, buddy, get them off stage. Why do they call it Cologne? Have you ever smelt one of those? It ain't great. Oh, mic must not be working. Uh, deodorant in this market? I'd want a deodorant buy. Is this thing on? <laughs> okay, let me tell you the story of perfume. See, to be fancy, right, people about. wanted to Tomatoes! stink good, but people naturally stink bad. True. It's science. So in the beginning, people went to the garden to find the best smelling things that they could. And rub it on Here's a photo of the oldest perfume bottles ever found. That's crazy. And what's inside? Just garden stuff that smells nice. But we did not just stop at that. Hey, because the Aquadigio is, is bussing, okay? It, it gets the, you know what I'm saying? The story of perfume is the story of progress. By the time Cleopatra came around, perfume science had really advanced. You see, Cleopatra loved perfume. In fact, it was said that she had a whole perfume factory. That's crazy. The old factory, I believe they called it. But this factory wasn't just mashing flowers. They were using emulsifiers, adding resins, creating tinctures. Cleopatra's very own Chanel No. 1 contained cardamom, cinnamon, olive oil, and myrrh. So we've gone from garden to pantry. Okay. And she loved spritzing the stuff everywhere. Supposedly even spraying it all over the sails of her ship. That way people could smell her from miles off as she <laughs> sailed the Nile. By the early Middle Ages, we had figured out the formula for perfume. Effectively, there are three main components. Water, alcohol, and the most important bit, the aromatic oils. Okay. And by the way, perfume and cologne are actually the same. Hey, you know medieval, bruh. They had them good colognes because they, they, listen, they have the capabilities that everybody got now. So that perfume had to be bussing, all right? Same thing, but in different ratios of these ingredients. By the 1600s, they were trying all sorts of different things. Some things went well. Dude, pine. Pine. 
What about orange? I call it new car smell. But once global trade opened up, our tastes became more exotic. Out of the pantry and into the petting zoo. For you see, it turns out that animals have been hoarding all of the most bestest perfume smells. Oh wow. Yes. In the olden days, a bunch of manly men would brave very rough seas in order to pull aboard sperm whales. Now, they would cut open the digestive tract and pluck out a secretion of bile called ambergris, or in English, no grey amber. Sometimes they would harvest the rest of the whale, but eventually ambergris became so eat. valuable that it was simply more economical to dump the carcass back in the ocean and collect the next batch. Like when you kill a racehorse for its prize-winning jizz and then just leave it there on the tracks. <laughs> That wasn't funny. All right, quick science lesson, eggheads. Ambergris comes from the gross part of the whale. And when the whale eats something quite sharp, let's say human bones, the ambergris forms around them and protects the lining of the gut. That's the ambergris role. That way, as the sharp thing continues down the intestines, the whale doesn't get poked. But if ambergris comes from a whale's digestive tract, what does it smell like? Surely not good. When it's dry, it smells kind of woody and earthy. Okay. But when it's wet, it smells like ass. But it's not actually the smell that's the useful function. Ambergris is a fixative. So what it does is heighten and bring out the scent of other things. Oh, wow. These flowers, they smell all right. But add some ambergris and, ah, that's the one. Now, once they figured this out, they realized, oh, there's a whole bunch of things we can use a fixative for. And they got quite gross with it. She they added it good. to food. She asked to touch. In fact, it was said that King Charles's favorite dish was ambergris on eggs. Oh, wow. But they didn't this, stop there. This that. is like, if y'all watch Click Link, the anime, uh, the, the episode where the girl was trying to figure out what she was putting in the ramen, and it was like that, that grounded uh, flour thingy. That looks crazy. All right, let's get back to it. Yeah, they added it to rum. They added it to coffee. They added it to cigarettes and smoked it. That's and crazy. they used it as an aphrodisiac. Now, some people will say that the whale is a mammal. But that's not strictly true. It is, in fact, a fish. Yeah. Just look at the tail. And you may have also heard that there are a lot fewer of them these days. Which, although a relief because their absence helps offset the sea level change climate whatever, we were worried that we might run out. So we said no more hunting whales for ambergris. But did that stop the perfumers? No. No. They immediately asked, hey, do you think there are any other animals that smell kind of weird? Yes. Turns out the musk deer has some potential. Musk deer. Now we hunt That's the crazy. male musk deer specifically because it has a particular gland called a musk pod, which, when dried out, looks like this. And it uses it to mark its territory and attract mates. Now, don't worry. Unlike ambergris, yeah, this no doesn't way. smell like ass. Instead, it smells like ammonia and piss. And you just can't get a smell like that at home. So we started hunting them to the point where they were a protected species. So the authority said, you have to find a different animal. Bro, the amount of the amount of killing and dealing they doing to smell good, you know the world had to be funky. You know what I'm saying? So from there they moved on to hyrax feces, one of the most feared and dangerous animals in all of Africa. Actually, we got some reactions. And it to was the, the inspiration for the original Lynx. The theater, the theater video. Ashley, watch that video next, bro. I'm telling you. Africa smell. Banger. Straight now, banger. Their feces, when dried, is called hyracium or Africa stone. Mm. But it's not just these ones, they have other stones in Africa. Come on, guys. Now, the smell is fairly similar to deer musk, but unlike the deer, the hyrax doesn't need to be killed or disturbed for their feces. They're just giving it away. In fact, Hyrax even have a communal toilet, which is used for generations, which makes it very easy to collect up all the good stuff. That's crazy. But it's not just the Hyrax, I've got other animals. This is Remember those civics of the virus videos? 
Wait, don't wash that thing's anus. Mom, mom, get the bottle, get the bottle. Turns out <laughs> it's the anal gland of the civet that's actually the important smelling bit. <laughs> Who's figuring this out? That's what I'm saying. Why don't they use the good parts of the animal? The, it's the bacon <sighs> part of the bee. You know? Anyway, it's the ass that produces all the delicious musk. It smells like shit. <laughs> right, but it must be good for something because it goes for $4,000 a kilo. But we ain't done yet. You know when you've just killed a beaver and you cut open its ripe abdomen? Well, the reason it smells so good is because of a little gland called the castor sac, smells good. which makes a yellowy scum-like substance called castorium. And it is used to waterproof the beaver's fur coat and also mark its territory. It is also very fragrant. And you know what that means. If it smells, it sells. And in this case, castorium is more kind of leathery with smoky hints of vanilla. But unfortunately today, you're not allowed to harvest the beaver. They're walking around very smugly, just like the other protected animals. But you know what? We don't need them because we have a synthetic version of castorium now and it's just as good. And you know what? We've got a synthetic for the whale, the deer, and the civet now. And they're used in lots of mainstream perfumes. Modern day, we've got a synthetic version of practically everything. Exactly. And even better, the advancement of synthetics has opened up a huge range of smells that were never possible to distill or capture before. Mm. And the result is some very silly perfumes. You know that bacon bit of the pig? We got that now. Windex smelling, Pretty much anything you can think of, really, someone has created a fragrance of it. I In some no instances, we're even beating nature herself. For example, you know those roses that you get at the florist? And then people go, ah, oh, these smell beautiful. But actually, those roses are spray. not bred to smell good. They're so specialized for good looks, longevity, and disease resistance that they've practically altogether lost their smell. Oh, so crazy. often what the florist will do is add an additional scent to the flower post-picking. And typically a synthetic rose perfume is used because it lasts longer and doesn't dry out the flower. Yep, we're just that good. And what's the future for perfumes? Well, I don't know. But what I do know is it's going to involve some comedy gold. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. My wife asked me for Chanel number no. five, and I was like, huh, not right now. I'm watching the football. Channel number. <sighs> so it's a tough night, ain't it? You know, on the, like on the television. You know what? I am going to say it. Halloween, if it's good enough for Kramer. Hey, I might have to do a cologne brand. I ain't going to lie. That might be my thing, bro. Listen, I have Versace Euros on today. Banger. All right. That uh, Spice Bomb by Victor Ro Rolla. Banger. Okay. Chanel Blue. Banger. It's good enough for me. <gasps> Ad time. This Christmas, she works in the big city. Busy professional. My career, this and that. But she's going home for Christmas. Small towns are the worst. I'm a big Nord city career Hill. gal. <laughs> oh my god, are you okay? <laughs> I am now. And she's about to learn the meaning of Nordmas. Mm. The most VPNist time of year with a 30 day business. money back guarantee for NordVPN.com slash into the story. <laughs> Soon I will have installed public Wi Fi in all of Nordville. And once they use it, Yo, their private. Mont Blanc? Come on now. But data will be exposed. Governor Craven's got this town by the baubles. And I can't believe that big city company you work for works with him. Come on, we have to put up the Nordmus lights for the big Nordmus festival. What? <laughs> Let's go ice skating. What? <laughs> He's so cute, but I'm a city girl. Girl, Terrible. you sound like you're in love. I thought I knew what Nordmus meant. But it means nothing without you. It's like the end of March. It's always Nordmas time of year with Nord's huge discount on a two-year plan. Use the URL. NordVPN.com slash internet story. A 30-day money-back guarantee is the best VPN in town. Now I love small town. And I'm in love with Nordman. But I can't leave behind big city Korea. True love and a really good VPN don't come around too much.
Panda. 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 Axe? You rock with Axe? But you gotta take a chance. Boss, I don't care about making partner at the firm anymore. I found my good? new home. Fence. Big public right. Wi-Fi Sasha is spreading Euros across the city. Right. Nordmus will be ruined. Oh, oh, oh. Bro, listen, if you if you use Axe or you bro, if you use BOD, if you use BOD, you're done. You're done. Need a hand? How are we gonna stop him, Nordman? With this Nord themed brick. I love you, Nordman. And I love you, big city woman. Let's go home and watch the international Netflix catalog. It's a Nordmas miracle! Go to nordvpn.com slash internet historian to get a huge deal on a two year plan plus four bonus Nordmas oh, 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 red is a bank. Ads too. over. You know, that ad makes me think about the time I nearly had a wife. Mm. Feels like a lifetime ago now. I was in Japan. Living the digital nomad lifestyle. Mm. I had a startup selling seashells down by the seashore. But I broke the one rule of being a digital nomad. I got mad. Digitally. And that's when I saw her. Oh. It was love at first sight. She is okay. I remember her laugh. <laughs> her touch. Every morning, breakfast in bed. But the truth was, a I had breakfast. no money. Criminal. We couldn't live on love alone. So I left. I sought out to make my fortune. Like a real man. I tried so many things. <laughs> I actually think this sucks. I'm out. And I bet you're wondering how I finally struck it rich. Well, truth is, I'm the guy who invented the Joe Rogan podcast. I do. Once I became a gajillionaire, I went back to that <laughs> beach to try and find her. She was But gone. instead, I hit her with my boat. We never found her body. But she had a secret. One she took to her grave that I was sworn not to tell. She's not around, so... Dude... She was a mermaid! Du -du 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 -du. Come on, champ, we're That's going crazy. to Japan! And here's where it all begins. In the year 2022. Oh, it's a Tuesday, probably. On. And local folklore researcher Hiroshi Kinoshita is looking up some fantastical animals in the National Yokai Dictionary. Mm. It's like the bestiary from Witcher, right? And he comes across a photo negative of a mermaid mummy. Oh, oh my god, he says in Japanese. Upon seeing the mermaid, he knows that he must track it down. He must form a team. Researchers, assemble. So he gets together the best damn crew that he can from the University of Science and Arts at the Okiyama Prefecture. And he plans to track down the mermaid mummy, wherever it has escaped to. Now, it doesn't take him long to figure out that it's being held at the Inuin Temple in Asakuchi. You know the one. Asa what? Being held at the Inuin Temple in Asakuchi. All right, Japan must be trolling, naming a city Asakuchi. That, 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 they're trolling. They're trolling. You know the one. So he struts up to the sacred building. And there at the back of the temple is a fireproof safe. And inside of that is an old wooden box. And inside the old wooden box is a mermaid. was the mermaid. We found it. We found a real one. But where did it come from? Well, alongside the mermaid was a note that dated back from 1903. Mm. And it said... A dried human fish, a.k.a. Ningyo, was caught almost 300 years ago over in the seas of Tosa. It was then dried out and taken to Osaka. That's crazy. And from there, it was passed around to many different people until it arrived at the temple. Now, the Ningyo have an important history in Japan, and sightings of these half-fish, half-human creatures have cropped up all across the country. 
Kinoshita himself had personally tracked down 13 of them all across Japan, usually kept in... Bro, that boy about to end up in JJK. He, he about to eat one of them uh, um, dark energy, dark spirit fingers. Sukuna about to be running all through his mind, bro. He's, he's done. Museums and temples. However, what you might not know is that traditionally they have been associated with bad omens. Mm. Aye. And everyone knows the infamous tale of Yao Bikuni. I know I don't. But I'll recite it to you just in case. Appreciate so the story it. is that one day, a poor fisherman catches the biggest fish of his life. It was a strange looking fish, and its head was almost human like. But he brought the fish home and invited all of his friends and family to come over for a feast oh, to celebrate yeah. his largest catch. You know, he's got his arms stretched out like this. He's like, it was this big. No, it was this big. I swear, it was this big. During dinner, one of the guests sneaks into the kitchen to see just how big it was. This big? I can't believe it. And he discovers that it is actually <laughs> a ningyo. Oh no, he says in perfect Somebody Japanese. Now he quickly warns the other guests, don't eat it. And he warns them just in time. Taishi. They've got their fork like right up to their mouth. Taishi eating that. Taishi, don't do it. They throw all their food away. Let's just have some rice and drink the night away. Oh, that's tough. Okay, so they do. And they have a lovely evening. However, one very dishonorable guest decided to sneak a bit of the meat out of the trash and put it in his pocket. He then goes home drunk and falls asleep. He didn't eat it. But when he woke up the next morning, he checks his pockets and... <sighs> no! The delicious fish piece it is gone. What? Turns out, in the night, his daughter had been rummaging around in his pockets looking for treasure. And she found the meat from his pocket. And she was such a greedy guts that she decided to eat it then and there. Well, you know how, first of all, you got it out of the trash. Second of all, she got it out your pocket. Mad lint. All right? Yo, some people are sick. The father was terrified for his sick daughter. Me. But she didn't seem to be sick. Do you feel weird at all? And it's shaking her. He decided not to tell her anything. Maybe it'll all be okay. However... From that day forward, the daughter never aged. That's right. She remained a young adult forever. She eventually went on to marry. But as her husband got older, she stayed the same age. Eventually, her father got old and died. And soon enough, did her husband too. Everyone she ever knew was getting older and dying, but she remained the same age. She was immortal. Eventually, at age 120, she decided to shave her head and become a Japanese nun. She traveled the country, planting trees as she went, and she did this for 800 years. But eventually, she grew tired. Mm. You know what? I'm tired of living. She entered a cave in her hometown of Obama <laughs> and she was determined to never come out again That's crazy. she begged and prayed for the curse to end but it never did she sat in that cave for so long that she turned it's to stone. stone that's crazy and today at the Kuinji temple in Obama remains the cave that Yao Bukuni entered People have been into that cave to check whether she's still in there, but nothing was found. Oh, wow. However, a stone statue of her resides at the entrance. And colloquially, it is called the Bar Rock Obama. So we're back with Hiroshi. There's no way. That's, there's no way that's what it's called. He asked the Inuin temple if he could borrow the Nino. Look, let me do a little CT scan on it, right? And they agreed. Hiroshi hands the Nino to a team of scientists and they get to work. They do their tests, beep, beep, boop. And it's Control plus it's scan on the keyboard. And here are the results. It's stage four cancer. I'm so sorry. No, but really, 
Turns out the Nino dates back to the 1800s. The note that said it was from the 1700s was wrong. Its body is made from cloth and cotton, wrapped oh, no. in pufferfish skin. The tail was made from a croaker. I don't know what that is. Would we show that on the screen? With the mouth of a different fish and the hair of a mammal. And they can see that there's a metal nail in its back. Oh, oh my God, together. it's invented tools. I. The forensic analysis and the construction Be materials bonk. in its back did cast some doubt over its authenticity. But you gotta believe in something, damn it. <laughs> Aye. As promised, the Nino was returned to the Enyuan Temple, where it still lives today. But where, oh where, did my mermaid go? <laughs> <gasps> it's her! You're, you're back! You know what, I, I kind of missed you. And... What the hell is that? Daddy. No, 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 that's... You know what? I never did find her again. I think these things are a big myth. End of part. Okay. Boy, I thought we was... We're here on the ancient streets of Kai. Okay, the second part, I didn't really get. The perfume, I understood. And there is our destination. In these triangles, the greatest luxury that all the elites crave... Oh god, no, no, not not that. The, the second most thing that mummies. You can find them in these tombs, and there's only ever like I one dude guarding before. them. But before we take, we must understand. Mummification started over five thousand years ago. Yep. And they were first discovered by the Europeans in the 15th century. But the legend goes the locals knew about them even earlier than that. It's an elaborate process, but essentially, you're drying the person out, turning them into a human salami. All right, so when the Europeans found all these mummies, what do you think they did? Well, uh, they put it in a museum, right? No, no, no. Wrong. They ate them. They used these mothers for everything, and everybody wanted them. What do you mean they used them for everything? Well, fancy people would take whole mummies and show them off to their friends at fancy dinners. To really show off the owner's wealth, they would sometimes... Yo, y'all see them people who be doing that, like, in real life? Like, they'll sit on a table while people, like, eat off them? Bro, there's some freaky people out here, man. I ain't gonna lie. Unwrap them, too. They were used as paint. They call this mummy brown, by the way. They were used as fertilizer. Oh, man. Talk about supercharging your soil. They were even consumed. Don't mind if I do. No. Yo, no. Not like this by grinding them up into powder and taking them like a herbal supplement, which they called mumia. But with such high- Listen, I see one uncaucasian person in this video. I'm not speaking for y'all. Can one of y'all's representative please enter the chat and, and, and defend what is going on here? I, I have to hear it. I demand for your mom. After a while, they began to run out of stock. Uh oh. They were becoming rarer and rarer to find. They were being gobbled off the face of the earth. That's crazy. So the authorities passed a bunch of laws to protect mummies from becoming altogether extinct. extinct. These are the last two of their species, and they're both male, but they won't mate. No. But the mummy is much like the Tasmanian tiger. Every once in a while, one will just kind of show up and prove that they're not altogether extinct. Oh, man, the year 2013. The location? Dyfus in northwest Germany. We are at the Kettler household, owned by Grandfather Kettler, who is now dead. But he had a son, Lutz Kettler, and Lutz Kettler also had a son, Alexander Kettler. Okay. And they are both there at the house. After a rainy day, there was a leak in the roof. So 10-year-old Kettler gets up into the attic to explore. You know, have a oh, bit of a look around. No. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Old antiques, photographs, and, oh, some old roof tiles. Those will be useful. So he goes over to the roof tiles and, hmm, behind them is something strange. No. A box. A mystery box. 
Now the kid is smart and he's seen Jumanji, no so he knows not to touch the box and instead go tell his dad. Now the dad drags the box into the center of the room. And he opens it. And inside... A smaller box. Okay. But it's very curious because it is covered in hieroglyphs. So Lutz crosses his fingers, hoping nothing supernatural will happen. And he opens the inner box. Inside is a mummy. That's oh crazy. my god. But there's more. There's also it? two smaller boxes. One contained a death mask and the other a canopic jar. All right, so he might have a dead body in Bro, I'm leaving the crib, bro. Listen, whoever, whatever squatter want to come in this house and take over, it's all yours. But me, I'm out of here. The house now. So naturally, he calls the authorities. The police show up and ask some questions. Lutz then explains a little bit of backstory. He remembers that in the 1950s, his father went to Derna in Libya. Okay. There, he acquired a chest and had it shipped back home. He remembers a conversation about it, but Grandfather Kettler insisted that it was a replica. Das ist ein replica, son, son, son. Not a real mummified person. Mm. Now, at this point, the police did not think it was a real body, but it was worth getting it scanned just in case. So he loaded it up in his station wagon, and off he went to the Berlin Archaeological Institute. Now, they agreed to do a scan. And so they're fiddling with buttons and dials and stuff, and it's fake, right? It's fake? Well, here's where things get a little more dramatic. Oh, no, this is about to be Results. Crazy. Fake. Inconclusive. Wow. There is a fully formed skeleton here. Now, that is unusual for a fake. Often a fake will just be shaped like a person, then filled with sticks and cloth and rubbish. Yo, who However, together it's got even like stranger. They found that all of the bones were wrapped in some sort of metal plating or foil. Next, they looked at the skull, and that's where things were the most odd. It was very realistic. Its teeth had roots. Its form was more intricate than the typical fake. Well, means... It also had a laurel. But even a more laurel. notably, there was an arrowhead lodged in the eye socket. Now that is very unusual for a fake. Hold on, I got more evidence to do. So they're doing more tests and stuff. All right, we've carbon tested the linen wraps. What's the verdict? Well, those are from the 1900s. Okay. Now the plot is thickening. We have a supposed fake mummy, but with a very realistic skull, perhaps murdered by an arrow to the head and mm. bandages that date to the modern day. That presents a new problem because it's not unheard of for people to do a murder in the modern day and then cover things up by disguising the body as an ancient artifact. Oh, that's what they... For example, in the year 2000, there was a man who claimed he found the mummy of an ancient Persian princess, mm. the daughter of Xerxes. However, when they examined the body, they found it was, in fact, a potential murder victim from 1996 who died from bludgeoning. All right, so the police now actually have to get involved. And it's about to get even more complicated. So they confiscate the body and they do their own tests. And the results this time say, nope, this thing is 2,000 years old. It's not fake at all. It's ancient. Oh, wow. What? So eventually the experts all get together and go, okay, this is dumb. Let's take it to Eppendorf University mm. and have it properly tested and not just tested. Crack the thing open like a delicious kinder surprise. So this new set of experts gets to work, and when they open up the mummy... Nothing. All right, remember how we said that the bones were covered in a special type of foil or metal plating? Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out the scientists didn't quite get that right. Instead, the bones were sprayed with a metallic chemical that prevented x-rays from going through. The bones were made from plastic. Oh, wow. Or at least, the body was. Turns out, the skull is real. Yes, a real skull, and not from an ancient mummy, but from a 20th century man. However, it was not a murder. This skull is from a cadaver, and it was medically prepared for educational purposes. So how did it end up in here? And what about that arrowhead? Well, it turns out that that's from a children's toy. Someone just popped that in the eye socket as a joke. So finally, the mystery was solved. It's just a plastic skeleton with a real dead guy's head That's put crazy. on it. Wait, how does that solve the mystery? It doesn't. 
Anyway, so Lutz was satisfied that the whole thing was fake and not a murder victim. Oh, let's put that back in the attic, he said very Germanly. But then, ah, uh, eine bitte? Bro, I don't care if it was a, no, no, it's, it's never coming back to my crib. Is getting disposed of. Was is das? He says. Another box? The Book of the Dead? Well, that sounds like a fun read. So Lutz starts reading the ancient Egyptian out loud. Anaxunamun, Emotep, Brendan Fraser. And what happened next will shock you and make for a very good thumbnail. Was that the thumbnail for real? Hey there, champ. You're probably wondering why I'm out here on this park bench. <clears throat> Sometimes I just come to see the autumn leaves. Beautiful sight. Winter beautiful will sight. be here soon. Dust in the wind. <sighs> Truth is, sport, I have a highly highly contagious respiratory disease. I won't be around much longer. Dust in the wind. I'm like Willy Wonka from that movie. And you're like that ugly kid from the Willy Wonka movie who gets all his stuff. Or the Oompa Loompa, I don't know, I haven't seen it. The point is you're so close to being fancy. I can feel it. There's Yo, just the one be lesson thing. left to learn. Oh, see, I told you. It gotta be the last one. We learned about theater. We learned about wine. We learned about, uh, real history. <coughs> anyway, speaking of ancient Egypt, here's this ancient Egyptian gun. And Franz Ferdinand, what are you doing here? Of course, he's not the real Franz Ferdinand, he's a mummy. Now, the thing about the ancient Egyptian gun is that it's very sense- Uh-oh. I hit your congratulations for being somewhat fancy cake. Okay, I know, hey. Come on, Mr. Ferdinand. About we gotta clean this up before the Park Services Commission hears about this, and they make another complaint. <laughs> right, we're almost done with the series, and then it's back to the usual content. So in case you missed it, there's also drinking on incognito, a new story okay. mode out next week. And if you like fancy, that's great. But if you don't like fancy, don't worry, it's not forever. Mm. Goodbye. I wonder what made him do the series of the fancy, okay? Mm. Don't forget NordVPN, nordvpn.com slash internet story. Huge deal on a two-year plan, you'll love it. Hey, look, look, the internet historian back with another banger. To you, Biden. All right. Um, the fragrance part is about to be having me do research because I'm not putting no animal dookie, dookie hole residue spraying it on my body. All right. It's not going to happen. So I'm going to have to do my, my education on that. But look, one more, one more fancy video. And we back to the old ones. You know what I'm saying? I like that. But um, 